Hello, hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, and welcome if you are new. I am so happy to be here, and I am so happy that you are here. Today, we have such a fun and exciting reading vlog. I'm going to be taking you guys along while I read three books, and I'll get into more of the books that I'm reading in just a second because I'm actually filming the outro right now, but I realized that the clips that I had filmed for the intro were a little bit staticky, so I wanted to fix that. So I'm going to throw it back to past me to tell you all about the books that I'm going to be reading, and you'll see my face looking like this a little bit later on. Today, we are going to be doing a reading vlog. This has been so much fun throughout the summer to like sporadically film these and I genuinely have so much fun talking and just yapping about the books. However, I think this one I'm going to keep a little bit more spoiler free. There's probably going to be a pop up around my face telling me if I did that or not because honestly I'm kind of horrid at not saying spoilers because I just want to yap and yap and yap. But that's beside the point. Today we are going to be going through some books that I am currently reading and then I believe we're also going to be starting one. But for the one we're starting, I have two options that we'll get to a little bit further down the line. I also have some fun activities planned this week, so I'm so excited to take you guys along with me and just kind of take you guys along. I don't know, I just love filming these vlogs, so I'm so excited. So as for the books that I'm currently reading that I'll be talking to you guys in this vlog, I am reading Whiskey Business by Elliot Fletcher. Now this book is absolutely amazing. I cannot tell you how much I'm enjoying it. In fact, you're going to be finishing it really, really shortly because I'm 80% of the way through and I'm addicted to this story. Like genuinely, I cannot explain to you. I'm just loving a grumpy heroine and I didn't really realize how much I loved grumpy heroines until I read this book. Like it just felt like everything was clicking right into place and then I remembered that Heartless and Take a Hint Danny Brown are some of my favorite books and both of those have grumpy men. So I don't know why I was so surprised about how much I loved Mal. And another thing with this book that I've really been enjoying is it really feels like I'm in their life. Like I'm just watching this love story take place and it feels almost super realistic because sometimes they just kind of panic. Normally I feel like I would be frustrated by that, but it's not written in a way that's frustrating and it's playing such a movie in my head and I'm so engrossed. I literally kicked my feet the other day and squealed. Like I do not know what to tell you guys about this book, but it's actually amazing. So that's the first book that I'm currently reading that we'll be finishing up pretty shortly. And the next book that I have is actually on audio and it's Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent. Now, as you know, me and Letters fight a little bit. So I really was so convinced that this book was Daughter of No Words and I could not figure out why. What is words having to do with this? I mean, like, I guess she's learning like a new language, but I don't really get it. It's Daughter of No Worlds. And I didn't get that until the title was actually said in the book. So I'm about 70% of the way through this one. And I was going to start this vlog yesterday and I, in my head, I was like, okay, I'm starting the vlog tomorrow. I ended up listening to 20% of it. So we're a little bit further in, but I still have about five hours left in it. So we'll see how that goes. But this book is so, so good. So it's about our character, Tazana, and she was previously a slave and she bought her freedom, but things didn't entirely go to plan. She ends up kind of fleeing and escaping to this different city area that's like halfway across the world where she meets a bunch of magic wielders that are similar to herself except she's like half magic person and not full magic person like some of the other things and in order to join this society of magic people whose name i think they're valarians but i like my brain is just so so frazzled on some of the names in this story like when i listen to them i'm hearing them i'm like i got it but saying them out loud right now is just really throwing me for a loop apparently but basically these wonderful people have the ability to control different kinds of magic and in order to join the society she has to be trained so she gets paired with this like dysfunctional apprentice because he's actually not the same kind of magic wielder as her and he's really grumpy and remember how earlier i said i love grumpy men i'm in love with max max i'm like so so delicious so so good their relationship to zana and max is so cute and my heart currently is breaking. I won't get into what's going on in the story because I'm going to try to keep it a little bit spoiler free, but my god, am I just like pain. Pain and suffering. I don't know how we're going to get through this because I went into this book completely blind. That's my mini update. I actually just got home from vacation, which is super, super fun and exciting, but I do have to get to work now. I do have to get to work now, so I'm going to leave you guys. I'll update you when I have more about the books and I'll see you guys then. Alrighty guys, it has been a minute since I talked to you guys. I have been so productive. I have done an entire day's worth of work I have applied for more research position jobs because I'm actually leaving my research position at the end of August to take on another research position. So I need to actually have another research position to take on. So I've been doing that. And then I actually ended up filming two videos, which was so, so crazy and so, so fun. So I've been filming those. And I have to figure out what I want to do next. I feel like I want to take a little bit of a break from bookish things, but also I really want to edit thumbnails. So we'll see what's going on there. I have read a little bit more of Daughter of No Worlds because I listened to it while I was getting ready. And this story is truly just heartbreaking and beautiful and I cannot wait to see where it goes next because there has to be something coming. Like I can just feel that there is something coming because there is no way that what happens happens for as long 
as it's supposed to happen for. I know that's super vague, but I really don't want to spoil it. So we'll see what I end up doing, but I think I might probably end up editing one of the videos because time seems to fly by. I don't know. So last I spoke with you guys, I said that I had just filmed the videos. I was so productive, I actually edited those videos and made the thumbnails for those videos and then went on a walk and then ate dinner and then watched some reality TV and I'm sitting down to read. I'm going to listen to Daughter of No Worlds. I have four hours and 39 minutes left, but I listened to it on about two times speed. I think I'm at 1.75 right now, so I think I might finish it time, but I'm also so tired because I was so productive. So we shall see. But again, this book is just making me scream all of the things because I just, I want them to be happy and I don't know how we're going to get out of the situation that we're currently in. So that's what's going on. Unfortunately for me, the second book actually has a hold on it at my library for like two weeks. So I've immediately gone on to the wait list because I need the next book now, even though I still have four hours in this book. But yeah, that's where we're at. I thought I was going to do Whiskey Business. I thought I was going to finish Whiskey Business tonight, but I'm so <laughs> tired so tired so i'm going to listen to a bit of daughter of no lies which i think would be good if i didn't finish it tonight because it's about 10 o'clock right now so if i listened to the two and a bit hours it'd be like midnight and i have to get out relatively early i think we'd have at nine because i'm starting my work for my research position about 30 minutes later than i normally would because i just some things that were going to go on tonight i thought i would need a little bit extra sleep so that's going on but then the things that i was going to do aka reserve parking for my university they moved the date because they're doing updates on the parking system so no worries now i'll just get up even earlier the next day when i do have to do the parking it'll be fine that's where we're at hello all right today has been an actual nightmare because remember last night when i said you know i have a couple hours left of daughter of no worlds but i'll probably go to bed I did not go to bed. In fact, I did stay up until I think it was 12.30 to finish the book because I was so enthralled and I was so engrossed in this story. I think I've landed on like a 4.25 for it, but it was so, so good. The magic system and magic elements in this book were so cool. I loved the relationship that developed in this book and I was so here for it that I'm like desperate to get my hands on the next book. But unfortunately, someone has their hold on the audiobook in front of me, so I'm just sitting here twiddling my thumbs waiting for it. I will say that Samarin and Zareth, their names were super, super similar on the audiobook. And I did find myself kind of wondering who was who and what was happening. But then once I like, but then once I told myself like the one that ends in M is which character and the one that ends in TH is a different character, then I kind of got it. But like just listening to them without kind of like focusing on that like specific ending consonant, I could not with the audiobook narrator's voice tell them apart. I truly loved the butterfly magic and how it like developed throughout the book and especially in like battles it was like so cool to like listen and I could like visualize it in my head. This book really played a movie in my head and I really really loved it. I loved the magic. I loved the relationships. I loved everything. It was really really good. I have to read you a line because I simply cannot function. It goes, I was a cartographer tattooing a map of her onto my soul. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What? That's beautiful. 4.25, I think, is where I landed. I'm like deciding between a 4.25 and a 4.5, but I'll let you know as I sit with it how much I think about the book and like how much I like ruminate over it. Anyway, as for today, today's been a yikes. Today's been such a yikes. Not only did I not get enough sleep, <laughs> but I worked the entire day. I worked from 9.30 to 1.30 at my first job. And then at my second job, I worked from 2 to 7. And so I am beyond exhausted. I'm beyond exhausted. But I did listen to a little bit of The Truth According to Ember, which was what I thought was going to be the next book that I picked up. However, because I am stressed, <laughs> I found that listening to it, having all of her lies just build up and build up and build up, I was getting really, really anxious. And I was like, I actually can't do this. So I did not realize how much this book relied on Ember's lies and how much they seemed to just build and build. I didn't get too far into it, but I definitely got far enough into it where I was like, okay, I need to stop. So right now I'm listening to The Au Pair Affair by Tessa Bailey. I read the first one in the sports romance series that she's reading, but that was the golf one first. I gave that two stars. 
I enjoyed it, but it was also super, super cringe at some points and I didn't like other sections, but I like the entertainment value of these stories, shall we say. So I'm hoping that this one is better because I thought it could be. So we're going to see how that goes. I like just started that while I was in the shower listening to it. So I'm not too far into it, but those are the things. Those are my updates. I'm exhausted. I'm going to go eat dinner now um, and then probably listen to the Au Pair Affair. I still have to finish Whiskey Business, but I genuinely do not want to finish that book until I'm like in the right mental space. Like until I'm like sitting, I'm calm, my eyes don't hurt to stay open. So we'll see. Plus, I do think I'll get quite a bit of listening done tonight because I have to buy my parking pass at midnight for my uni semester. So I'll be up and I'll need something to keep me awake. I had the absolute best day yesterday so I went out for lunch with Ames and honestly it was so so fun we went to Cactus had really really good food and we ended up going to the bookstore for a little bit and I just yapped my head off I was like this book I like because x y and z I haven't read this but I want to read it because this and this is my favorite and I've read this and she was so so kind <laughs> and she was just listening and she was like I just love hearing you talk about books and it was like the sweetest thing and I was like oh my god I love you so much Ames thank you so if you're watching this I love you thank you we went to the bookstore specifically because I was going to pick up wild love because this chapter still has the first round printings with the mountain covers now I tried to read wild love when it first came out and the book just didn't work for me I didn't like the tone and there was something about the interaction action between Ford meeting his daughter. It just rubbed me the wrong way and I put the book down. And then when I went on vacation about a week ago, I was going to pick it up there because I was like, you know, I should have it. The mountain covers. I just want that spine. However, I went and I folded to like a random page, which I never do. And I read a diary entry and the way it was written and like what was being discussed, I was like, what is going on? Like, this does not feel like Elsie at all. And then today I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just get the mountain cover and I'll like just deal with it, whatever. It's fine. And I don't know why I'd never flipped to random pages in books because like spoilers, but again, I flipped to a random page and it was another diary entry and they were like calling this girl a slut and they were talking about broccoli making certain things taste bad. And like, if you know what I mean? And I was like, oh my God, what is happening here? So needless to say, I did not leave the bookstore with Wild Love. And I was really sad because I love the Chestnut Spring series and I was hoping that Wild Love would be equal to that or, you know, enjoyable at least but the tone of that was so strange anyway we came home and i got such exciting book mail i ordered a special edition of a book that i've been wanting for so long and i managed to find at a very very reasonable price because normally it's selling for hundreds of dollars and the person actually included some fan art that i bought from she's genuinely the sweetest so i wanted to show you that it's the tour edition of akasif so it has this special pattern there and then this spine is a bit different as well and i love this book so much and i've reread it every year since i read it for the first time so i've read this book only like four times. I think one year I read it twice. I don't even know. I love this book so much and I've been wanting this edition. I just love this art so much. So because I got this, I reorganized a bunch of my bookshelves and if you haven't seen the b-roll footage for that already of me reorganizing it, then you're going to see it next. But if you have, just ignore me. She also sent some fan art, so I'm going to show you that. So this is Miss Feyre. Look at that! so good and then i literally screamed when i saw this and like if you want to see my reaction of seeing the fan art for the first time definitely go check out my tiktok that i've posted on this but this fan art i have this posted on my pinterest like 17 times for the books i literally in my akatar like board it's there all the time and same with this one this is one of my favorite images of them at starfall i can't even we have ness and cassian as well 
and then some stickers. So we have Nesta and Cassian as a sticker, which is so fun. And then I have ass. And then I was gonna say my boy ads, but I haven't read his book, so I don't know if he's my boy. When I bought the book, it also came with the pin on the original backing, and I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this because I don't have like a pin board or anything, but it's so, so exciting and so special. So oh, I'm just so happy. Then for the rest of the night, Ames and I, we ended up watching some YouTube and some Love Island USA, and it was just the best chill night. And tonight we're actually going, I have a very, very big surprise for you guys. Um, we are going to be going to a drive-in movie. So I'm hoping to take some footage there because I'm so, so excited and I've never been to one before. And I am now about 35% into the au pair affair and I'm really, really enjoying it. Though I will say, I went into the book blind. Like, all I knew was what I had read of the two characters in Fangirl Down. I wasn't expecting there to be, like, a strong presence, I guess is the word that I am thinking of right now, but it's probably not the right word, of our main female character being quite fearful of men and her trauma and past experiences of what happened to her. And I just wasn't mentally prepared for that. So I was like, last night was kind of readjusting where I was at, didn't realize that there was going to be talk, feeling unsafe and having sketchy situations kind of happen. But I really love how our main male character is really aware of it and how he is trying his very best to act respectfully and to not overstep but also to make sure she's safe and I just feel like it's very interesting dynamic watching this person try and support and make sure that they're safe without wanting to overstep and or be too involved because they know that they're kind of like that the person that they're interested in who has the trauma is a bit uneasy about them themselves um hopefully that makes sense i don't know i feel like it's really i feel like my words are not forming very well right now but i am enjoying it i am definitely gonna listen to more of it been sitting in my car mentally preparing myself to enter my home because I was so overstimulated at work today it was not even funny I didn't get very much sleep last night because we went to the drive-in movie theater which you guys would have seen some clips of and oh my gosh it was so much fun I absolutely loved it and it was such a fun experience I'd never been to a drive-in movie theater before and it was amazing right now I was 60% through the au pair affair but now I think I'm at like 75 and i was gonna check in with you guys at 60 percent and be like so it's gotten spicy but like it wasn't like the usual tessa bailey kind of cringe spice however now that i'm at like 75 percent and some more spicy things have happened i have realized that yes indeed it actually is like cringe spicy <laughs> however i will say that i'm enjoying this book significantly more than i enjoyed fangirl down and while it is like semi cringy i'm still like having a good time still enjoying it it's still like a fun easy light spicy romance novel so that is fun and exciting right now all i want to do in my life is eat my leftover olive garden i'm so excited and then read whiskey business however i don't know if I'm gonna be able to stay awake, I think I might take a hot nap and then maybe finish whiskey business. But we'll see. I'll take you guys along with me. I will let you guys know. I will keep you posted. I'm definitely enjoying the au pair affair more, even though it had gotten a little bit cringy in like the last 10%. And my whole for daughter of no worlds, the second book just came through. So I'm gonna be doing all of the listening and I'm really excited. Alrighty, I'm back in my car. I'm just running out to go grab some din dins, but I wanted to give you a little update on whiskey business. So I'm still absolutely loving this book. I read about 50 pages. I went from 285 to 330 so around that page mark but I just have to say that I love this book it feels so homey so cozy and I was able to fall right back in the story but it's actually been five days since I started reading it which is absolutely insane I've been filming this reading vlog for four days so I last read it just the day before I started this vlog and that's crazy to me like I thought about this book every single day and wanted to read it every single day but I just couldn't because of like what was happening in my life or I was just so tired because I've just been like burning the candle at both ends working like 10 hour days so that was pretty crazy that it had been so long I will say in those pages that I did read the one thing that I would say I still absolutely love this book and I'm still gonna give it five stars from how it's going right now but I just wish that they had just like one or two more conversations about things that didn't end in like intimate scenes like they're very very like spicy like they're really getting down to it and I have no problem with that I'm enjoying it however I do wish that we just had like a few more chats because I feel like at the beginning of the book they were so like 
connected and like chatting and things I just kind of want like a little bit more conversation but also I feel like it could be a disconnect because I did take five days off <laughs> so uh, there is that that maybe had I just read all the way through after reading like 285 pages would be like yes spice it up but that's just my one little thing however I'm gonna go grab some din dins I think I'm also gonna grab some ice cream because it's really hot so yeah I simply don't even know where to start I am so incredibly happy after eight long months I have found my first five star of the year this book is amazing this book reminded me why i love reading this book transported me to the isles of scotland this book had me falling in love with a grumpy whiskey distiller and though i don't typically like celebrities in my books or like famous people april is an actress but it didn't take on the story because it's about her living her life in scotland and even when there were some things about actory things i didn't mind them mal is so caring he's so anxious and like i feel that so hard and he is just getting through life the best way he can and, and April just brings life out of him. He is so kind, he's so sweet. Their relationship was so cute. I will say it was very spicy. Please read it. It is the idyllic Scottish Highlands, a whiskey distiller who is like the sweetest man. And it's such a cute story. And it just felt like I was watching them live their lives. Like I just felt like I was there day to day with them living their lives, watching them fall in love and laughing with them, giggling with them. I'm so sad that it's over. And I know I took a five day break because I didn't want it to be over and now I'm sad. So I think I'm gonna go take a shower and then eat some chocolate ice cream. And then I have about two hours left of Fangirl Down, but I listened to it on about 1.75 to two times speed. So I have like about an hour left of that. So I think that's gonna be my plan for the rest of the night, but I can't wait for this series co to continue. I can't wait to see Callum's book. And it, apparently it's called Scotch on the Rocks. And I'm like, oh my God, I love it. And I need it immediately, but I don't think it's coming out until next year, which I'm super sad about. But I will just reread this book because I love these characters. I love this home. We have reached the end of the vlog. Final thoughts on the Au Pair Affair. So this book was by Tessa Bailey and I have to admit that I am a Tessa Bailey hater in some aspects. Like I read the books knowing that they're not gonna be five stars, not gonna be my favorites, but I find the plot interesting. I love when she talks about them on TikTok, but I know that they're also just not for me when I read them. So I always use them on audio, but I significantly enjoyed this one more than Fangirl Down and I ended up giving it three stars. It was Insta Lovey. It also was Miscommunication Central, but I had a good time and I did enjoy the book. And I also enjoyed our main character being able to kind of break out of her shell. Though I do think it happened quite quickly. I think that it was also semi-realistic in the sense that she had li been living so long in her like shell and sheltered that it was just time for her to kind of break out that she almost needed the drop kick in order to do it. Unfortunately, this book did suffer from some of Tessa Bailey's writing and being very, very cringe. One line that I wrote down in particular, which really just hit me and I think perfectly sums up the entirety of the cringeness, was that his abs looked like an egg carton. I'm gonna leave that one right there for you guys. <laughs> but I was cute, it was fast, I enjoyed it. I would have loved to see a little bit more of the daughter and our main character Tallulah's relationship, but I get that that wasn't like the central focus of the story. I also wish that Briggs, I think his name is Briggs? Br Br Bridges? I don't know, his name was weird, I'm so sorry. I wish he stuck to his like guns a little bit more about some of the things that he wanted, because it seemed like he kind of felt like a house of cards every time Tallulah looked his way. But like, I also get that, like, he's a simp, I get it. You know, you're just, so in love with this girl that you just like lose all your morals all your you know boundaries i get it it happens anyway i enjoyed it i gave it three stars it was fun it was easy is it gonna be my favorite no am i gonna think about it again probably not but will i continue with the series yes yes i will with all of that said i'm going to actually end today's vlog here i hope that you enjoyed i had honestly the most fun filming this and i got to take you guys in with me to the drive-in which was such an amazing and cool experience to document and I cannot wait to talk to you guys again soon. So until then, I love you all so, so, so much. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.